Hey y'all, it's Brandon with Voodoo Forge. Now a customer sent me a real USGI M7 to modify for his dissipator or pistol. So that's gonna be different than the other ones I did. So let's, let's look at how I did this. It was bound to happen and now it has. A uh, customer has sent me an actual M7 bayonet to, to shorten for his, I don't know, pistol carbine, whatever it is. But um, <clears throat> the differences between the real M7 and the, uh, the other ones are pretty substantial. So this is going to be different than the other shorty bayonets I made. Let me show you. First of all, GI M7s are, are so much higher quality. Just the weight and the feel. Um, I don't know how to explain it other than the, the feel of it. it. It's just higher quality um, steel and everything. The blade profile is the same, but it's a little thicker. It's just heavier duty. Uh, the handles are made of, of more substantial material. But the main difference that's going to change how we modify it is where the cheapies, the one I did was threaded on, had a, a screw threading it on. I've, I've done a couple of those for people. And then like this one is, that's just welded or maybe epoxied to the, the tang of the knife. Whereas the, the real M7 is like a mortise and tenon. So I'm going to have to remove this and put another uh, tenon on here. Yeah, the tenon's the sticky through thing. It's a technical term. So let's take them apart and look at the differences. Two things that jump out immediately is on the, the Chinese one, it's just got a piece of round stock that is put in a hold to hold the guard on. And um, on the Imperial, this is an Imperial M7 by the way, this has a piece of flat stock that is put through and flexed around to hold the guard on. So it's very substantial. Uh, the handles themselves, you can see this is just hollow and this is solid. The, uh, on the, the Imperial M7, this has metal inserts in the handle that are threaded and are, uh, I don't know, uh, molded in the handle. You know, they're, they're held in there and uh, the other side threads into it, has a little lock washers on it, whereas this is more of a, a, a shaft. You know, there's nothing wrong with, with this, but this is just, you know, more, more quality all the way around. So what the plan is, I've got to measure this. I've got the dimensions of his, uh, his barrel to his bayonet lug. I've got to measure this. I've got to cut it off with enough length to go through this and peen it over. Then I've got to cut this out. So we have our tenon and uh, then peen it over. This thing is in brand new condition and it is sharp. So I'm also gonna put some tape over this blade. Even the false edge isn't false. Just to uh, make it a little less likely for me to get stitches today. So this is the measurement from the end of the bayonet lug to the guard. This is how thick our latch is. And for, whoop. Then we're gonna add a little for right now because I don't know how much to peen over. Ooh, this is kind of scary. Okay, so getting this off, I'm, I'm going to have to grind into this to get it off. Maybe I can do it with a file. This tool is one of the tools I can honestly say I've never been sorry I had. Hopefully this will do this. This has barely got anything there. If they use an epoxy too. The Dremel was not 
working and I'm scared of getting into the clasp here too much. So I'm going to cut it from the back side. That's plan B here. Oh, maybe. Okay, so I've got this cut off now and if you look what I'm just now noticing, which you think I would have observed before, is this is, uh, how do I just describe this shape? This is like a inverted pyramid here. So I would have had to grind really deep in there to get that off. So it's very good for, for locking this piece on. Makes it very hard to get off, you know, in, you know, when you're stabby stabbing or when you're Trying to modify it, so I should be able to get this side off pretty easy. point I'm gonna see if I can tap this thing out and here we go starting to go this is the piece I this is the piece I just drove out and you can see how mushroomed over it was on the end so I would have had to grind it ground into that quite a bit to get it out so going from the other side was the right call the time has come to cut this now when I was cutting this off here the top of this was even with the the part of the latch that goes up against the bayonet leg so I can use that to get my measurement for this and what the plan is I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this close and file it the rest of the way so one side of this is marked, so I'm going to cut it out. Okay, to cut this second side, I'm having to flip it over on the other side, so here we go. And so it almost fits on there, but not quite, so I'm going to use the sander. Well, here's the plan. Everything is ready. I'm going to heat this up with the oxyacetylene. Drop this on here. If I, ha I have the torch handy, so if I got to heat it a little more, take this ball bean hammer and I'm going to strike this down really hard, really fast, and uh, get it to fill that void right there. And uh, then I'm going to take the peen and peen it over and uh, that should fill up the area right there now i'm almost positive this is going to burn the parkerizing off well it might not i don't know i just don't know we're gonna find out what it does so anyway though 
Oh, that's that's where we're at. I'm excited. Yeah. On the road, bud, on the torch. to heat it with the uh, latch in place because the metal's expanding but they cool down okay I got everything ready to go again And I left way too much of this sticking out. Good. Worked really well. Now let's figure this. Uh, Handle out here. So with the handle, you got two ends. This is the end that we want to cut because that is the one that has the uh, uh, the the spacing for the piece. Well, here I'll show you for the piece that holds the guard on. So. And make sure we cut the right end. Normally I cut these handles on the bandsaw, but since this one is a little different, I want to slow it down just a little bit and use a hacksaw. Not that a hacksaw is really a precise tool, but it helps you slow things down a little, which can help you be a little more precise. <laughs> oh, these things crack me up every time I make one. This is our finished product. Let's see how we do here. It's on there. You can pokey poke, stabby stab with it. The, uh, I, I, I missed this on camera, but I had to take the, uh, the tenon down a little more to clear on the bayonet lug where it latches it cannot be sticking out as much as I had it initially so I had to take it down a little more so I I ground it and and used the torch same thing you saw just you know took it down a little to get it more flush but the uh, that shape inside which I described as as like an upside down pyramid and I'm sure there's a name for that shape and there's some guy who is real fun to be around, who's gonna let me know in the comments. But that shape, that upside down pyramid, really has this locked in there good. So it is not coming off. But there she is, ready to ship back to my customer. 
overall, I'm really happy with this. I'm really happy with how it came out. Um, there are going to be some people who are not going to like this. And there's a couple of ways to look at this. There's going to be the, well, you're destroying a historical artifact. Well, this is this was unissued. This was not, this isn't like uh, your daddy or I guess granddaddy at this point uh, carried this in, in Vietnam or, or you know, even Grenada or Desert Storm or anything. You know, this, this was not, this piece of equipment was never issued. Uh, if it was, it was never taken out of the sheath. So, yeah, they're getting more expensive, but they are by no means rare. And it was so neat to do the the uh, the the transformation on this one with that mortise and tenon. There was there was a learning curve there, but we, everything came together fine. Um, another thing to keep in mind is the guy who owned this wanted this done to it. It's his property, so it's really none of your damn business what he does with it. Uh, so, I think we're safe. You know, it's not like we were cutting up a, 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 a World War I or World War II bayonet that it had been, you know, at the Somme or the Battle of the Bulge or something. So, I really like it. I think this guy's going to really enjoy it. It's really cool. What do you think about it? What are your opinions on it? Um, anyway, yeah, that's... Uh, that's so all we got for this one. We'll see you on the next one. I call this drill the Chinese balloon drill. We'll need a longer rifle.